Welcome to the Steve Stein Guitar Podcast, brought to you by GuitarZoom.com. If you want to improve your guitar playing, keep listening. If you want to improve even faster, go to GuitarZoom.com, where you'll find all of Steve's premium courses, masterclasses, and memberships that'll help you quickly and easily improve your playing. Now, here's your host, Steve Stein. Steve Stein here, and today what I'd like to do is talk to you about a really cool thing that you can do, which is writing a really cool idea, a riff or whatever you want to call it, and then all the options that you have sometimes with chord changes in the background, okay? So what I'm going to do to show you this, the first thing we're going to do is, is you'll have the tab and everything for this, but I'm going to take this lick that I came up with here, put a little reverb on here, and what I'm doing is going... <laughs> So what I've got is 16 notes. Okay. Now, the key for this thing could be, it could be looked at in a, a number of different ways. I think in my brain, I'm kind of thinking this as, as E. But what I want to show you is all the really cool things that you could do with this. Um not just using the chord progression that I've given you, okay? In the in the the thing that you just watched, okay, what I was doing is playing E and then D and then A and then at the end I play G A and then go to E. So, I've got all these chords E, D, G and A and they are all working over this riff, which is pretty cool. So, Again, I just want to remind you how important it is that when you're learning how to do something or you're you're playing something or you're writing something or whatever it might be, that just beyond the realm of learning whatever this thing is, there's this whole world of creativity just outside that, but it requires you to spend a little time exploring. And let me show you kind of what I mean. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to take that same track and give me just a second here. I'm going to put a little click at the beginning of this. Okay, so what I've done is I've taken the track that I've recorded here, okay, and I've I've muted the rhythm tracks. So all you're going to hear now is you're going to hear this little count in. I, I had to make this so we know when to come in here. you can see there's where I put my drums and everything like that, okay? But what I'm going to do for this example is instead of waiting that long, I'm going to take all my drums and I'm just going to move them up so they start right away. And I want you to hear what this sounds like when I try it over different chords. And this is kind of how I do my writing. So here we go. Here's your, your riff and then I'm going to, I'm going to play along with it. Here we go. Okay, let me turn it down just a little bit, so... If you're enjoying this episode and you'd like to support the podcast, go to guitarzoom.com and consider becoming a premium member. There are three memberships to choose from. VIP, which gives you instant access to a library of short but powerful courses as well as new bite-sized lessons each month. There's also Play Songs that gives you step-by-step -step lessons so you can learn to play your favorite songs fast. And finally, there's Masterclass, university-level training on everything from soloing to music theory, from blues to home recording. For more info about these memberships and all the premium courses available to you, go to guitarzoom.com. Now back to the podcast. So, 
E works, right? Now watch this though. Let me go back. I'm going to try an A chord. It sounds like it wants to go back to E, but A works. Let's try G once. Look at all these cool chords that work. Now I've added a C chord in and it still works. So what's really cool about sometimes when you come up with a particular lick or a particular idea, your brain might be telling you, well, it's in the key of whatever, therefore it fits over this chord, which is absolutely true. But we can see now that this one riff could be used over any of these chords. So I don't have to start on E or end on E like the, the little riff that I did. I could have used literally any of those chords in any combination. Okay. And then the next question is, is, okay, so what else can I do with the rhythm of it, right? I'm just letting them all drone right now. But I could have done something where I'm going. And you might listen to that and go, well, that sounds kind of weird. But if you play it over the song, you never know what you're going to get until you do it. So this, this one idea, this one little riff, this could lend itself to so many different things, okay? Now what I'm asking you is to take that idea, you don't need to take this exact lick because, I mean, you, you got it from me, right? So you're going to want to take it and you're going to want to do something else with it. You're going to want to change it somehow and do something cool with it. You could move it into a different a different place on your guitar, or you could change the, the notes of it, or change the tempo of it, or, I mean, all kinds of different things. But what I want you to explore is how cool it is that you can use all of these different chords over this one thing, and they all work, okay? So again, sometimes the, the coolest little creative things are just outside your reach. You just be, need to be aware to not just go with the obvious all the time and try some different things. next time on the Steve Stein Guitar Podcast. All right, so in this lesson, what we're going to be learning about is pentatonic superimposition. And basically what I'm, I'm saying is we're going to be in a particular key. In today's idea, we're going to be in the key of E major, but we're actually going to be soloing using a different pentatonic scale than E major. And I'm going to show you how that works, why it works, and how you can use it. So if we just start off thinking about E, for instance, an E major chord, and I just made this really basic loop here of an E sound. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up and just play E major pentatonic like we normally do. Okay, now that's the typical kind of E major pentatonic-ish sound, and it sounds great. But what we're going to do today is we're actually going to be soloing using a different pentatonic scale. We're going to um, superimpose the G sharp minor pentatonic scale over E major. Hey, Steve Stein here from GuitarZoom.com, and thank you so much for listening to this podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, can I ask you a favor? Please subscribe, leave a review, and share it with a friend. Your feedback means more to me than you'll ever know. And be sure to check out my YouTube channels where you'll find over 1,000 videos to help you with your guitar playing. Thanks again for listening. Stay positive, keep playing, and keep having fun. If you'd like some help with your guitar playing but you're not sure how to get started, go to GuitarZoom.com and look for the Help Me Choose survey. By answering a few simple questions, you'll get Steve's personal recommendation of the perfect course for you. All this and more is available for you at GuitarZoom.com.